What is going on YouTube? Hayden back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, as well as XLM and the S&P 500. As you guys know, we are wrapping up XLM review here on the channel, and we are gonna be doing a different cryptocurrency next week, starting tomorrow. So what that means for you is definitely go down in the comments and comment what cryptocurrency or altcoin you would like to see reviewed here on the channel. We have a ton of people commenting different ones. A lot of people, it seems to be safe mode, um, but if you guys have any other opinions on which cryptocurrency you would like to see reviewed, definitely make sure to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, what we're going to be talking about in today's episode is the crazy movements that are happening within the market. And I don't want to spread FUD or talk about any sort of uncertainty that's happening within the market, but there are a ton of people commenting and making videos discussing the possibilities of a crash within cryptocurrency, XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, pretty much the entire market. So I want to give my comments and my opinions on that, address that situation that we're currently battling with, and kind of figure out exactly where we're going to be heading to. Now, yesterday we made a video discussing discussing uh, the possibilities of a small bounce and a small recovery off most of these cryptocurrencies. And I still believe that fairly strongly, but I want to continue off from that yesterday and discuss what we could experience moving forward in today's market. Hopefully you guys noticed that I did change up the lighting. I changed the white balance up so I now no longer look like I have a yellow tan. Um, I should look my normal skin color finally. And um, yeah, we're going to be moving forward into that. Otherwise, guys, if you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave a giant thumbs up as this does help support the youtube algorithm make sure to follow me on twitter at crypto v official this way if you have any questions comments or concerns you can dm me over there otherwise let's jump into today's episode All right, guys, before we jump into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to PointPay for sponsoring today's episode. For those that don't know, PointPay is a blockchain company which has been operating since 2018. That's quite a while in the crypto space. Their team has created an all-in-one cryptocurrency ecosystem of 10 fully functional products. PointPay disrupts regular banking systems with its innovative approach targeted to crypto mass adoption. The one-stop fintech platform offers a full range of financial services within the PointPay blockchain-based bank. This enables clients to open crypto checking and crypto savings accounts in most popular cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and stablecoins such as USDT. You can also earn interest on this with the daily accruals. Now, what's pretty cool is within the Point Pay bank, customers can issue invoices and send the funds via email address and take out crypto loans under the collateral of some, of some crypto, either on their website or on their mobile app, which they offer. So what's also cool is Point Pay Mobile offers crypto banking applications for Android and iOS, which is still pretty cool. This allows you to buy and sell crypto, exchange it for other alts, and even buy their own token called PXP, which I'll talk about in a second. So point pay me function enables everyone to send instant crypto payments via email worldwide, as I discussed, but you can also apply for a Visa crypto debit card. They also accept SEPA, Samsung Pay, and Apple Pay through their point pay payment system with more than 45 different fiat currencies. So as you know, their token PXP enables customers to earn up to 30% APR, get discounts for trades, loans, and voting rights in the future. They are currently on a pre-sale and you can also join their ICO and be able to receive a high volume bonus. There has been a lot of hype around their PXP token too in regards to price movement, so we'll have to keep an eye on it for future videos. Otherwise, huge shout out to PointPay for sponsoring today's video and let's jump into the technical analysis. All right, guys, so to dive right into the technical analysis, as you guys can see, top 10 cryptocurrencies, we seem to be just kind of free floating upwards. We're up about a little over a percentage and a half across the market. Uh, Bitcoin's up 0.7, Ethereum 4%. We have XRP up 0.4, we have Doge barely up, it's floating at 27 cents. And then um, for the most part, uh, the coins are pretty much just kind of just cruising by. There are some coins up double digits, uh, which is still interesting to see PancakeSwap really making a major run for it. Um, but otherwise, we look okay in the markets. Uh, mainly what I want to do is dive into these technical analysis. I want to show you guys all these cryptocurrencies really quick here on the screen, and then we'll go uh, and move forward into the deep technical analysis. But this is what XRP looks like. XLM is right here. We have Ethereum, 
We have Bitcoin and then the S&P 500. So to dive into the XRP technical analysis. So yesterday's video we talked about, we were probably like more so over here um, when we made yesterday's episode. And we discussed why, or I discussed why I wasn't going to be buying into XRP short term, uh, mainly because of the fact that we started to trade sideways inside of a descending fractal. Now to me, that's a red flag. I'm going to stay away from that. It's really hit or miss as to which direction we're going to be moving to. And that's not something I like to play around with. And as you can see, I was pretty much right. Uh, we pretty much just consolidated sideways, which we anticipated. I mean, you can see it's the same thing that happened within uh, XLM. Usually if we kind of float back um, in the middle of a, you know, ascending or descending fractal, we tend to just trade sideways here and then just you know, decide which direction we're going to move to. So the sideways consolidation is anticipated. And that same thing is happening right now in XRP. It is allowing us to kind of recover and recuperate from the major loss, but it is kind of rallying itself up for another what could be pullback to the downside, which is a concerning factor in regards to the fact that we have yet to break bullish outside of this uh, descending fractal. So that's what you guys have to understand. I mean, we've been calling the reversal on crypto for a couple weeks now. We anticipated the movement. Um, we've been creating these lower high formations which honestly is not a good sign in regards to a bull run um, until we see a recovery and we break through resistance of this uh, green downtrend right here, we are still going to be bearish. Now, obviously, we could still make uh, runs and wins in a bear market. It is still very much so uh, a popular movement. A, the only time that I don't like trading in crypto is when we are stagnant and just trade sideways. Like movements like this, it's it's terrible. Even in XLM, sideways movements like this, you can't do anything. You can't make runs. You can make a, aggressive trades on the you know, maybe the 15-minute charts. But in regards to the four hour and the daily, it just doesn't make sense to be getting in a market like that. So for XRP right now, I'm fairly confident we're going to trade sideways, retest this top resistance that we have here, as you can see. And then we're probably going to decide which way we're going to go. I'm anticipating more of a drop again uh, to lower levels. I'm going to extend this chart out just a little bit here so you can kind of see what we're referring to we could delete this right here um, as we do know pretty much what happened i'm going to delete these two as it's not necessary anymore but you can pretty much tell that we were consolidating in here we flipped bearish as the four hour uh you know support decided to flip bearish we saw the the, the green band cross over the red band, um, ultimately signaling uh, we're in for some sort of retracement. And you can see that's pretty much where we've been moving to now. Um, there is some sort of lower step stair step pattern that we have to you know anticipate, and I do think it's going to continue on. So I am anticipating sideways consolidation for the rest of today. And then by tonight or later today, we should bounce off this resistance up here and probably see a recovery or, or drop lower. Um, that's what I'm anticipating. Obviously, if we close a four hour above this resistance, we can then anticipate a run to the upside, which you know would be nice because it'll bring more volume back into the market. Nobody likes a bearish market, obviously. Um, and it'll bring more you know volume because people don't realize you can make money shorting it, which is fine. It, it's good for us. We can capitalize off these runs. But really, I'm anticipating a play like this. I mean, this is literally still April 26, um, maybe tomorrow morning. But um, the consolidation is definitely due. We're probably going to finish this up and then see a drop. That's really where my head's at on XRP. And I'm going to capitalize off this run to the downside by shorting it on um, BitYard. So that's my plan moving forward for XRP. Now, the other cryptocurrencies that show some interest. Um, XLM is one of the big ones. Now, what was interesting is that XRP didn't. Uh, correct lower you know we anticipated you know it's a bounce here and we trade sideways which is unfortunate because usually we can see a recovery like if we drop lower we can short it which is great and then sometimes we'll swing back up like that or other times what we'll do is we'll recover we'll drop and then we'll just trade sideways until we ping the bot the top support and drop lower again it's a very big possibility now xlm is one of those coins that looks fairly bullish right now you know in a, in a bull market which it seems like we're in still in this uh there's a big ascending fractal we're bouncing off this bottom support the moving average here and every time we do so we pump higher notice it's the same you know trend we hit here we pumped up we hit here we pumped up we hit here we pumped up it's the same pattern it seems to continue um the only problem now now is now that we're in a bear market for the most part on some of these major cryptocurrencies it seems like it should influence uh, you know XLM to see the same reversal pattern now really what we're waiting for on this market is the second we see confirmation of a break uh, below this you know support level the moving average on the daily we are in for a bear you know a bearish reversal I mean we can look at the the weekly we can tell that we are overextended. We are trading inside of here. I mean, we look okay. It really looks like we want to pull up. 
But um, big moves, I think, is coming for XLM. You guys are paying attention to this. I talked about it yesterday. That this is a very big sweet spot for the coin. We've fallen from retesting top resistance. This was a key uh, short opportunity here. And now we may be getting back into a key long opportunity for a swing to the upside. So I'm paying very close attention to here. Obviously, there's two things, as always, that we can do when we see you know retestment in this area. We can obviously buy in for a short. The second we see confirmation, I would say, Say conservatively below 39 cents. So if we close the daily closer to here, we can short the market. And if we continue to stay above here, which is what happened yesterday, uh, we saw a major reversal candle two days ago. Yesterday, we bounced off of here, closed, and it seems like we're starting to bounce off. You could even today, you know, enter a, uh, a it's a more moderate style trading, but a swing to the upside. You can buy in right now and anticipate a rally back up. Now, obviously, it's going to be more of that moderate style of trading. I would obviously put a stop loss here. Um, you know, because this is the key zone that we don't want to break through. If we break through this, it's pretty much bearish. But if you want to wait and you want to wait to buy in, I'd say the exact confirmation for a short would be below 39 cents. So if you get in and the market comes down to here and then starts to short downwards, that's, you know, a key opportunity to buy in the second we see confirmation below 39 cents. As for XLM swinging to the upside, which is probably what I'm going to risk. Um, it just seems to be that potential. Uh, I would buy in for a long and I'm going to put my stop loss directly at probably 40. I would do 40 cents on the dime. It's currently 43 cents. I'd put a stop loss at 40 cents anticipating a rally to the upside. But we'll see how it goes. I mean, the coins look crazy right now. You know, we're seeing some crazy movement within Ethereum. I don't know where all this you know, aggressive volume is coming from where we've just been, you know, exploding upwards then reversing down and up and down and up and down. It's just way too aggressive uh, for my style of trading. Uh, the markets are way too, you know, it's too uncertain right now. I'm, I'm going to stay away from Ethereum, uh, at least for right now. We're just creating these wicked, crazy, uh, you know, fractals here. You can clearly see the two that we formed right now where there's a top resistance and a, and a more solid support level or a solid resistance level. And it just seems like the coin wants to drop. We're at a high, but it doesn't, it's not moving yet. So that's why I'm staying away from, from Ethereum. As for Bitcoin, um, the same thing is applying itself. There, you know, I believe short term, we're going to see that recovery. I mean, even in a bear market, we see swings back to the upside. I mean, hopefully you guys understand this now. If not, I mean, back in 2017, which I'll pull up just so we understand, even in a bear market, there are still recoveries and there are still swings to the upside. I mean, come on, look at this coin here. Yeah, we did see a major drop, but from $5,900 all the way up to $11,000. That's a big play and big money can be made in that. We then had a double top, big short opportunity and there's big swings from 6,800 to 9,800, about a $3,000 move to the upside. There's still possibilities of capitalizing off these runs. So the same thing is gonna apply itself right now in 2021. As you can see, we saw a major reversal to the downside outside of our major ascending triangle right here or ascending fractal. Uh, we broke bearish, which is what I'm looking for on some of these key charts right here. XLM would be the prime example. Let me pull that up. You can see Bitcoin's pattern has the same, you know, ascending fractal right here. XLM has the same ascending fractal. Bitcoin, although broke below it to catch up with its moving average, XLM is already at its moving average. That's the difference. Now, Bitcoin looks like it wants to reverse upwards. The reason I think so is even though we're in a bearish divergence right now, which we've talked about, hopefully you guys understand that. There's still room to swing back up. And what I mean by that, which will obviously then start to see our, you know, lower high formations is we can still see, you notice, look at the descending fractal. We have these big, you know, swings here, swing, swing, and we could easily see another one where we swing back up kind of like this. This would be a descending, you know, our bearish divergence. We could still have swings to the upside. So we're currently right here. So we could easily see another recovery. It looks like we're at the bottom and it looks like it should complete this movement here. And what does that mean for the coin? That means it should be bouncing off its moving average here and swinging back up to about $58,000. That's where my head's at. Now, obviously that's below its all time high of 63,000 or 64,000. And then it should be able to start movements like this. What I'm anticipating is something like this, where we should be anticipating moving forward. Or we could see something, you know, ping and then we could see a drop and we just could be moving like that it's very possible i don't think it's going to be as aggressive but i do think long term we are going to be seeing movements 
like this until we you know can confirm this bearish divergence is over and we could start to break all-time highs then i'll switch bullish again but for right now a good investment strategy is to consider it bearish you know consider it conservative style of trading but um, I'm probably going to be buying in on Bitcoin too. Now we have XLM, which looks good. And I have Bitcoin, which looks good. XRP still needs to consolidate out just a little bit more before I buy in. But Bitcoin retesting its moving average here. You can see we've had one, pretty much one, two, three, four days now of this major consolidation where prices just want to, you know, skyrocket back up, swing back up. It should allow the coin to move up to 58,000. It seems like this is a big resistance on coins. Nobody wants us to break below here. If at any point we do break below here, it is it is we're going to head much lower. I don't think we have that much more room to head lower, but that possibility is still up in the air. I mean, we're still so 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 much higher than our moving average. So, in regards to a total bear market, we could easily see Bitcoin retrace down to 60 uh, 20,000 dollars, and that would be a drop of I would say about 60 67 percent and unfortunately that doesn't bother me because that's a, that's a that's a, a recovery in the market to allow us to head higher and i think that's what's going to come long term i think we've finally broken that i mean you can see look at this major macd formation right here major swing on the weekly all the way back down huge drop to retest its bottom macd support and it looks like we want to break through there. And the second we do, it's going to be a bear market. And that big 68% drop is going to happen. Now, obviously, I'm prepared. Unlike back in 2017, when I didn't know how to short markets, I know how to do that now in 2021. So I'm not worried in the slightest. I do think we're oversold right now in the daily. So I think a small recovery is going to happen where we go like that. And then we'll drop lower. But I do think we're still in a bear market headed lower. So you guys have to pay attention to that. I do think I'm going to do a small scalp right now where I'm going to buy in right here. Um, I'll probably set my stop loss. Uh, it's tough because we're trading right here. I, I'll set my stop loss at 45000 Obviously, a good buy-in for a swing to the downside would probably be closing at 44000 But um, I don't think we're going to go that much lower. I don't think we're going to get that oversold. I think short term right now, we're going to buy in here. I think it's a good day today for a swing back up. I could be wrong, but that's where my head's kind of at. Otherwise, um, S&P 500 looks okay. Very, you know, overbought. I just think we're going to see a big uh, drop in price, but um, who knows? Otherwise, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. If you are new to the channel, definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave a giant thumbs up as that does help support the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. Peace.